Hey there folks, and it's Brian with Foxfire Army again, and today we are going to be installing this right here. Let's see if I can get that in there. This is the Novesk receiver end plate um, with the QD mount. So <clears throat> I got it all set up here on the vise. So the first thing we got to do here, and this is the way I, I personally like to do it, is uh, first things first, I take out the, the buffer and spring uh, just to get that out of the way here. Uh, just because you never know and when you're screwing things and unscrewing things, you never know what's going to pop out. Um, and if you were wondering, uh, I have the Geisley in here. Uh, it's the braided spring. Currently with an H1, uh, eventually this will be switched over to an H2. Uh, so we'll set that off to the side there. Now the next thing, obviously, I'm going to take my handy dandy ranger band off of here and toss that off to the side. And then we get the pleasure of actually trying to take this off. Now with this Geisley buffer tube, the one thing I've noticed is this actually is very, very tight with the mag pull. And where in theory, this should, at this point, just come off with me pushing. And as you can see, it doesn't. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, in any case, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna grab a screwdriver here and uh, I will pop this off off camera because that's what it takes, actually. All right, so next thing here, we uh, grab the handy dandy Magpul Armors wrench, which I really like this one a lot. We're gonna slide this guy on here and uh, hopefully my weak arms can uh, actually break this guy loose. Oh, here we go. Um, for those who don't know, I've been doing the Mission 22 uh, push-up challenge for April. So 2200 push-ups for the month of April. Uh, and so once we're done here, oh, just give this guy, normally, normally, a little hand loosen. And it usually will come out. Although for whatever reason, this guy, does not want to seem to unscrew. Let's uh, see. There we go. Whew. That would explain why. That is not a good sign there. Uh, so that is a good thing that uh, I check that. Hopefully this uh, doesn't mess with anything, but uh, I'm going to show you what happened here. I'm not exactly sure how this happened. Let's see if we can get this to zoom in. But it looks like at some point threads for the receiver that was on there uh, somehow stripped the threads off which obviously is not a great thing. So, let's hope that everything lines up correctly and that doesn't mess with uh, the install here because as you can see, I'm having to use this to take off what should be hand tight. So I should be able to get that off now. Uh, I got it around the messed up threads there. Yeah, it's just one of the things that can happen sometimes if you're not uh, extra, extra careful, obviously. So we're going to take the new end plate, um, which is actually slightly thicker, not by much, but it's enough than the original one. And uh, we're just going to make sure, yep, yeah, okay, everything fits, good, good, good. And then when you're re-threading this, 
what you need to do here, and let's see if we can get the camera to zoom in. I'm sure many of you already know this already, but there's a larger opening versus the other side, which is a smaller opening. Um, and that's actually the side that you're going to uh, stake once I put this on. So, in any case, we are going to feed this back on over here. And now we go past those messed up threads nice and easy. And then, so in this case, there's a little no vest logo on the back side here, and you probably will not be able to see this very well. Sorry, this is this lighting is bad in here. It's my garage. In any case, there's a little no vest logo here, and it's it's kind of inset. Uh, you'll want that actually facing out. So in this case, the buffer tube is going to go this way. Uh, so I want it facing that way. And once I have this in here. We just go ahead and uh, we screw this guy back on. And this is probably what ended up happening last time is you'll notice the end plate fits in there. There's a hole and uh, you'll want to make sure that you don't kind of overdo it here. Um, when you're putting this stuff in. You still need your pin back here to actually be able to hold. Uh, and so in this case, I definitely need to uh, back this out just a little bit. Give this guy one or two more turns here. Actually, that's gonna be, that's gonna be about all she wrote right there, folks. All right, so I am kind of a perfectionist. And I am actually going to loosen up my vise here. I guess I gotta lace it. Loosen it up a little bit more. And holy moly, that is tight. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I'm gonna make sure off camera that uh, this is nice and perfectly straight before I crank it down. Alrighty. So now that I made sure that everything aligned here, uh, sorry, it's just a little bit easier to do off camera. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to tighten this guy down. Um, and so I definitely recommend if you can, get it tight, get it to here, to where you're pulling up. Uh, at least for me, it just seems to work the best with my ARs. And then uh, just kind of give it a nice upward tug. And then that'll kind of seat it. And then, if you really want to be sure that you're on tight, just get it over here. And you're not going to want to over tighten this, just a nice little push down. And if it doesn't move with a nice, just firm grip, then you're good. Um, and then what you're going to do is where those little grooves were, we're actually going to take the end plate and we're going to pop a little bit of metal into those little grooves. and. In this instance, it looks like I am really only going to be able... I can get one over on this side too. So I should be able to get two. And, and when you're doing this, I definitely highly recommend staking in two spots if you can, rather than just the one. Um, and they're really easy to break out. You will, more than likely, after a couple times of doing it, if you take this on and off, which I won't be, you'll need to replace the end plate. So that's that. Then, once we're done there, let me tell you, these things are amazing. Just little tiny flathead screwdriver. Um, and then we're gonna feed our spring and everything back in. And I'm just gonna take that out to make life a little bit easier here. And then give that guy a nice little push in and put our spring and our pin back down in there and bam, let the buffer tube come right into it. Holds it in there and that's it. That's really all it is to change this out. And then now, uh, also again, the Magpul bench block, highly recommend this thing. So it's currently set for the lower. 
when I show you guys the upper, I will just flip this around and it will do the upper. Um, and so here you go, that's what it looks like. Fully installed. Um, and then, so if you were wondering, I'm gonna stake it right there. And then here's the other one. And I'm gonna stake it right there. Um, and basically all you're doing is you're pushing the little bit of metal from here, whoops, sorry, from here right into that little groove right there. And that's it. That's really all it takes. So if you're ever interested in building your own uh, AR lower, I mean, it's really that simple. It's, it's very, very easy. Uh, people make it out to be a lot harder than it is. So that's it for that. And stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.